Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you're on Twitter, the Gaming Drag today, I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir, Lucas's Path. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. <clears throat> Alright. Lucas is trying to use his phone while Oscar is leaning over to peek at his screen without any sense of shame. Lee is just leaning back in his chair, looking directly towards me with an expression so neutral it's genuinely unsettling. Lee quirks a questioning eyebrow, and I quickly respond with a wave that I... with a wave that I hope comes off as nonchalant. I hope I don't look as ill as I feel. I'm not sure if he sees right through me and doesn't say anything, or if he just did... or if he didn't notice. I'm changing my mind. Being the quiet type isn't great at all. When I sit back in my previous chair, Ed and Lily's were thankfully left vacant. Being surrounded by everyone is comforting. Pushing the negative thoughts away, I close my eyes and embrace the lackadaisical atmosphere. <sighs> The sound of footsteps causes my eyes to open. When I see Lily, she's already looking better than she did outside, but there's still little specks of evidence sprinkled about. The fur under her eyes are still damp, but now they're more disheveled, as if she tried to wipe them dry. Her slightly bloodshot eyes are only barely concealing any <coughs> Oh, goodness. Concealing any problems. Sorry about that. But she's smiling, and while it has a sad undertone, it still feels genuine. Whatever the call had been about, she must be glad it's over and back with her friends. Her friends... Us. Me. She's looking for some comfort right now, even if we're not supposed to know that. And bringing, bringing up what just happened but not, would only do more harm. She'll open up to us if she wants to. I don't want to push her even if I want help. I want to help. So I do what she needs right now. I give her a smile and a little wave. One that she returns with her own smile before coming to sit next to me. That's a small, it's small, but being there for her is all I can do at the moment. Sorry about that. Hope I didn't keep you guys waiting. We weren't. Wallace disappeared for a bit, too. She glances towards me with a curious glint in her eyes and a sly smile on her face. I don't want to know what's going through her head. By himself, unfortunately. All these choices and he chooses alone. I just called my mom. It wasn't anything weird. Oscar and Lily give each other a look that I don't recognize, and there's a sense of dread that rapidly fills up my chest. Of course you were, man. What else would a guy do when they sneak off alone? While well, I managed to stop my face from flushing at the initial comment, it's Lily's giggling that finally breaks my resolve, and I have to look away as my ears burn. I don't get it. Just ignore them, kid. They're being stupid. The foe insulted gasp Oscar gives in response is too dramatic for even him, and he just takes shakes his head with a grin on his face. Yeah, I can't pull that off. Sorry, Lil. Lil? <clears throat> Lil? What kind of nickname is that? My brain immediately flashes back to R.A. calling Lucas Lulu, and I'm not able to stop myself from grinning. There's a bad voice in the back of my mind telling me to bring that bring telling me to bring that up, but I really don't think he'd appreciate that. I'm not sure if Lucas is able to figure out what I'm think figure out what I'm thinking, but when he catches my smile, I'm able to see the insides of his ears darkening. Maybe he's aware. Do stop calling me, people. Jesus. Okay, man, look, there's not a lot of places you can go with Lily. You don't shorten anyone else's name. I'm testing the waters. No need to settle down so fast. The eye roll that Lee gives in response to is so incredibly childish that it causes my eyes to widen. When Lee smiles afterwards, I can't help but wonder if he's finally warming up to him. Oscar really brings out this different side of him. Their dynamic is certainly strange. They bring out the worst and best of each other at the same time. What about Wallace? I haven't really heard you call him anything that isn't dude or man. I'm not a big fan of nicknames. I'd really just prefer Wallace. I'll keep it at Wallace, then. It's a cute name, anyway. You're very biased towards Wallace. The name you give me is very demeaning. Ow, you're cute when you're grumpy. Aw, oh, you're cute when you're grumpy. That's why I call you that. In an act of supreme confidence or utter stupidity, Oscar reaches over and ruffles Lucas's head fur between his ears. The fox is so stunned that he doesn't even react for a second before he growls at Oscar, but the growing blush peeking through his fur tells a different story. But if you, don't, but if you want me to stop, I will. Don't want to ruin anyone's day. Fox looks down at the table as he starts to fidget with his ears, his face still visibly burning through his dark fur. If that wasn't enough, it's incredibly hard to not notice his tail thrashing behind him. <clears throat> it's really annoying, but my mom calls me grumpy too, so that's okay. You're encouraging him. The curling at the edge of Lee's mouth belies his, cold, his scolding tone, and when Lucas looks confused at the comment, he only shakes his head instead of elaborating. Looks like Lee doesn't have the heart to tease him. 
Soon enough, Oscar's trying to hug the fox, and Lee's half-hearted efforts to stop a scrap from breaking out makes everything feel so warm and affectionate. The giggling next to me brings my attention back to Lily and the memory of what I saw just moments ago. Looking back, back at the group, it's clear that they're preoccupied for now. I don't think prying is a good idea, but simply checking up on her should be fine, right? Hey! I'm worried my whisper might be too soft with Lucas now yelling at Oscar about belonging in a strip club. I wish I knew the context, but she turns towards me. Her previously bloodshot eyes are now returned back to their soft gold on white. No signs of crying outside of the stiff clumps of dried fur under her eyes. You wouldn't even be able to see it if you weren't looking for it. Hey there! I hope everyone be everyone behaved. Did you have to stop any fights from breaking out? I'm pretty sure Lee's the one who stops the fights. I'm surprised when she shakes her head and points to me before leaning forward to join me in whispering. It looks like whatever happened outside hasn't quelled her playful personality. I think Lee causes just as many fights. He's a bit of a prude. She gives a giggle that's filled with such a sweet tone that I can't help but smile back towards her. They get along a lot better than they make it seem. I think they're all growing on each other. They are? Better than that day in the library. Lucas isn't straight up insulting people anymore and Lee's talking a lot more now, or maybe you didn't notice because they're all so nice towards you. It causes me to sit up straighter in my chair and even sneak a glance towards the others. Thankfully, they're all still distracted with Lee trying to stop Oscar from making Lucas grope his biceps. Really? You're so oblivious, aren't you? Lucas is right. Oscar does have a bias towards you, but they, but they all do. I don't think I deserve that. I almost jump completely out of my skin when I feel a hand on my cheek. It's not an action I'm used to feeling. Even my mother would only scratch under my chin at most. I'm still not used to having such openly affectionate friends. But both Oscar and Lily, I'm not sure my heart is going to last the rest of the semester. You're a sweet guy, and they see that. You don't need to be so harsh to yourself. Now I'm beginning to blush just like Lucas across the table. He was now staring towards us with a raised eyebrow, but he swiftly turns his attention back to Lee, who's now scolding the two of them. Leaning back, the feelings of her fingers sliding off my cheek sends a shiver up my spine, which she notices and lets out a soft laugh that she tries to hide behind her hand. I need to change the subject. I'm getting distracted. Are, are you doing okay? You looked a little upset when you came back. I don't want to pry, I'm just worried. Branching myself for her smile to drop, I'm left flabbergasted when she smiles even brighter. It's filled with so much admiration that I can feel my cheeks burning so hot that I know my white fur isn't hiding anything. This is what I mean. You're so caring and kind. Yes, I'm doing good. Oh, one second, y'all. Hey, guys and gals. Sorry about that. I'm back. Um, okay, where were we? All right, let's resume. Okay. This is what I mean. You're so caring and kind. Yes, I'm doing great. I'm doing. Yes, I am. I'm doing good. Great, even. Hanging with friends always helps. I want to ask about the call. I want to ask so badly, but I know it's not my place. I have that dark need in my chest burning. I got to restrain myself just a little. Lee makes the choice for me when she calls out to the group. So, how did our investigation go? Did you boys find anything interesting? Everyone stares at me first, and when I meekly look towards Lily, she gives me an encouraging nod. This isn't something I'm going to get used to anytime soon. I guess this is my punishment for being a loner for so long. That seems more than enough for today. Despite only being here for an hour or two, I'm already, fe I'm already feeling drained. The others look like they're handling this much better than I am. In fact, all of them look still raring to go, even Lee, though the scowl he's wearing on his face gives that energy a new meaning. I don't mean to be a downer, but we didn't exactly get much shit done. In the end, it doesn't sound like we learned anything of substance from our investigation today. Just some hunches and leads, but nothing to use in our report. Turns out most of the people turns out most of these people were just that. Normal people. There's a chuckle and I already know it's Oscar before I even turn my head. He's leaning back on his chair, balancing himself on his large tail. I really hope this doesn't get out of hand. I... Come on, man! It's just the first week! There's no need to be so serious about it. We've only had one class and the whole thing was just about figuring it out. They don't expect us to have it all done by the next week. Trust me, I am a senior. Yeah. Lily's ba Lily bounces out of her chair with more enthusiasm than I think I've ever felt in my life. After returning from after returning from whatever that call was, she quickly returned back to her joyful self after only a couple of minutes hanging with us. We got some information on the important people related to this event. We can talk about how the media portrayed them too. We're doing great. I think the rest of the, the rest of the class has only just started. I got other classes to work on. You might be willing to dump all your time in a general education class, but some of us have actual real classes to worry about. Lucas sits up straighter with a huff, his crossed arms tightening as he tries to make himself look bigger than he is. His ears might make him look taller than me, but Lee still towers over both of us, and Oscar's just a giant, even while he's sitting. It makes his attempt to appear on the same level as him rather childish. But his comment did drag the conversation to a halt. 
No one else looks like they're going to say anything after that. Maybe Lucas went a little too far there. He must be thinking the same thing too, because he begins to sink, to slink down, to sink down in his chair while his ears press down against the, his head. I think I can hear him muttering an apology under his breath, but it's so soft I don't think anyone caught it. But now is my perfect time to interject. Well, um, I think we're doing good, even if we haven't gotten very far. I've enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I'm not very used to hanging out with friends before. I'm not sure if it's my imagination or the way that Lee softens at my words, but I swear I can physically hear the tension melting away in the group. It's like a waterfall is flushing away the atmosphere in its torrents. Right. Sorry, kid. I guess I was taking this shit a bit too seriously. It's not a bad thing to care about your studies. Yeah, we're burning big bucks to come here. It's good that you're dedicated. Just line up sometimes. You're gonna pop an eyeball, specifically with all the glaring you do at me. That causes Lee to snort, and just like that, everyone's smiling again. I want to say it's emotional whiplash, but it feels right. Exhausting, but right. Are friendships always this exhausting, or maybe I'm overworking myself? Or maybe I, maybe I messed myself up a little too much with the diary. Actually, that makes more sense. If I'm this tired, I wonder how tired Lily must be. She looked a lot worse than I did. I hope she's not pushing herself for our sakes. Speaking of Lily, she picks up the diary and holds it up with an overdramatic flare. We already have a big advantage on this project. With this, we have an extra leg up on the assign on this assignment. So, let's just have fun for now. Oh. Oh, that was the moment I was dreading. Suddenly, a loud car horn screeches from the parking lot next to the library. The ugly noise piercing through the quiet building. Our table must be right next to it. The loud sound causes Lily to jump, dropping the diary on the floor in the process. She's not the only one startled as Lee immediately jumps to his feet. Oscar and Lucas are still sitting, both staring at the two standing members of our team. Oscar's raised brown smile is stark contrast to Lucas's wide, frantic eyes that flicker over towards me intermittently. There's something about the car horn that sounds off. Off in a way that's awful and familiar. In a way that twists my gut to the point where I'm scared I'm going to lose my lunch. Before I can stop myself, I'm already on my feet and looking around the room. I must look like someone having a manic attack, especially if this especially if this is like last time. I must have fallen asleep again. I don't want another nightmare. However, this time the others just look just as confused by the reverberating sound, and I'm not sure if I should feel more comforted at knowing it's not just me or horrified that it's something they can hear too. What was that? Sounded weird as hell. Maybe... Oscar's cut off by a sudden cracking sound before any of us can react. The ground beneath us shatters. And just like that, I'm falling into darkness without even a chance to glance at the others. This awful darkness. This familiar sensation of dread. Nothing good is ever found in the dark. When I finally come to, the first thing through my, the first thing through my mind is just how uncomfortable whatever I'm lying on feels. Opening my eyes, everything's blurry and the light above is strong enough to cause a throb of pain to pulse within my skull. Jesus Christ! I'm trying to push myself to my feet, my sluggish body barely responds to my brain's commands. What should have taken me seconds feels like it took minutes just to push myself to my hands and knees. Despite how much time it took, it's still too fast for my body and I almost vomit onto the floor. The retching motion causes blood to rush to my head. By some small miracle, I'm able to keep my lunch from exiting my body, but it's only a small victory. Because I, when I'm finally able to comprehend my surroundings, it only adds more questions. Questions with very bad implications. The first thing I notice is just how white all the walls are. They're covered in posters ranging from diagrams of the human body to general notices. Looking down, it's very clear what the hard surface I had been lying on had been. The hard leno floor with a soft blue tint. I'm in a hospital waiting room. A small waiting room, like one situated outside a doctor's office. What? What's going on? The first thing I notice about this hospital is just how quiet everything is. There are no people moving throughout the building, no chatting between nurses and patients, no beeping and buzzing of equipment. There's nothing but oppressive silence that tightens its grip around my lungs, making it hard to breathe. I need to calm down. Just calm down, Wallace. Looking around the room, the small waiting area doesn't have too much inside it. There's a cushioned bench, a small stand, and a shelf filled with rows of pamphlets. The room is uncomfortably white with how clean the floors are, but I swear for a small moment, in the corner of my eye, I can see the floor of the furniture rotting. It's never there when I look directly at it. The sterility feels fake. While the floor is absent of any dirt, there are little pamphlets scattered across the floor, layers of colors and words that look almost pretty when you don't focus on them. Picking one up, it has a small raccoon crying on a desk. The whole thing is drenched in monochrome. The words are, do you need, the words, do you need someone to talk to? Does someone else you know need help? are plastered across the top in big block letters. Does someone else need my help? The tightening in my chest worsens and my breathing speeds up again. I know I shouldn't let this get to me, but it's all too much. This whole room is just too small. It's suffocating. 
Dropping the pamphlet, I rush out and e I rush out into an equally empty hallway. It's arguably just as eerie as the waiting room, but the relief that washes over me is much more important. It's much more prominent. Okay, Wallace, what exactly is going on? A am I dreaming again? Should I pinch myself? Pain doesn't happen in dreams, right? Admittedly, I learned that from a fictional romance book, but I think that's true. Pricking the back of my hand with the tip of one of my claws, there's a small rush of stinging, stinging pain that lasts only a moment before passing. I'm pretty sure that counts as pain. So, not a dream? I hope it's not the, I hope it's not the much darker option of kidnapping, but regardless of what it is, I need to get out of here. I contemplate calling out for everyone else. They might be here, too. But if this is a kidnapping, I don't want to tip off whoever took me here. Surely I'll find them eventually if I just look around. Pulling out my phone, there's a brief moment of relief that it, that it's not missing or been taken, but that's quickly redashed. I hold down the power button, expecting a burst of light, but the screen stays black. Oh shit, it must be, a, must be out of power. Shoving it in my pocket, I bring my focus back on getting out of wherever the hell I am. Creeping my way down the hallway, the desolate hospital refuses to acknowledge my presence. There's no sound other than light clacking of my claws against the tiled floor. Nothing moves. Nothing makes a sound, and that makes it so much worse. It's like there's something standing behind me, waiting for me to turn around. After a minute of nothing happening, I slowly move into a more casual walk. I can't release any of the tension in my body, but walking at a snail's pace isn't going to get me out of here faster. The sterile scent in the air feels suffocating and inescapable, like it's going to be burned into my nose. I just need to get out of here to, or find the others, and anything but being alone here. Speaking of the others, I really hope they're all okay. I can't help my mind from wondering how Lucas is handling all this. From what we've seen... It, he doesn't do well under stress, and calling the situation stressful is a colossal understatement. Even though Lucas is older than me, I feel like he's someone he's someone more vulnerable than I am. I need to find him as fast as possible, assuming he's here at all. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks for a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye